Just a heads up before we start this episode, Doors to the Brilliance Lounge will reopen on September 15th. If you're a multi-passionate creator looking to build a creative business with a solid foundation, grow an audience and community of raving fans, create and sell products by leveraging your existing knowledge, and learn to market in a non-sleazy way, my Brilliance Lounge membership is perfect for you. For early access, get on the VIP list by visiting brilliancelounge.com. Welcome to the Pimp Your Brilliance podcast with Monique Malcolm, a show about leveraging your existing knowledge, unique skills, or passion to build a thriving creative business. I aim to show you what's really possible when you stop letting fear have all the fun and start taking action towards your goals. You can learn more about this show and subscribe for updates by visiting PimpYourBrilliance.com. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Pimp Your Brilliance. I'm so glad that you're here. This is episode number 118, and you can find show notes at pimpyourbrilliance.com backslash 118. Today is lesson number three in the Brilliant Biz Bootcamp series, and we're talking about how to embrace selling. Ooh, did that give you some chills? Listen, I know that selling is one of those topics that feels very uncomfortable, very scary, because guess what? We've all been burnt by a poor sales experience. It probably doesn't take you too much effort to recall an experience where you've had a salesperson who was too pushy, a little sleazy, and just wouldn't take no for an answer. And that experience probably left you wanting a shower after it was over, definitely left a bad taste in your mouth. And now guess what? You're a creative business owner, all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and selling is a part of the deal. Logically, you know that selling is necessary but you're so afraid of becoming a pushy salesperson, so much so that your desire not to be a bad salesperson has made you resent selling altogether. Because you're rarely pushing your offers, you're rarely trying to sell because you don't want to be that guy. And I get it. I totally get it. But if you don't have the right mindset about selling, it can feel very uncomfortable or too salesy. A lot of creators really struggle with selling and it limits their ability to grow their business and become successful and leave their jobs if that's their end goal. So let's change that. In this episode, I'm digging into how to embrace selling as a creator because selling doesn't have to feel icky, create guilt, or cause shame. That's why I'm sharing a few tips to help you reframe how you think about selling so that you can learn to embrace it. And of course, make some money. So first things first, before I go any further, let's take a quick test. I need to make sure that I'm talking to the right person. I call this the slimy salesperson test, and it's really simple, okay? So you're going to raise your hand if you agree with any of the following statements. Number one, you want to scam people. Number two, you don't genuinely want to help people. Number three, Your business solely exists to drain your customers of every dollar they have. Number four, you don't plan on offering any value with the products or services that you are creating. Number five, you want to pressure people into buying things that might not be the right fit for them. Now, if you didn't raise your hand for any of these statements, you are not a slimy salesperson. So congratulations, your permission to sell has been granted. Okay, so you can sell because you are not trying to scam people. You're not out here just trying to get them for their money. You you have the right intentions behind what you're doing and how you want to sell to your audience. So let's talk about what is selling. The HubSpot blog defines selling as any transaction in which money is exchanged for a good or service. I like to think of selling as an exchange of value. A seller offers something of value. And if that thing has value for the buyer, they come to an agreement and they exchange that value. For example, if I want to learn hand lettering, but I don't know where to start, I can take a lettering class. The class instructor will teach me lessons in hand lettering in exchange for money. If I needed a website, I could hire a web developer to build my site in exchange for an agreed upon amount. If I need a ride to the grocery store, I can call an Uber to take me in exchange for a fee. In every one of those instances, There is an exchange of value. I'm getting a good or service that I need, and the other party is receiving the money that they need. And as a pro tip, 
Selling works best when both parties participate in a fair value exchange. So it has to feel fair. It has to feel equitable in order for both people to walk away and feel good about the exchange that happens. It's not selling at all costs. Instead, you're focusing on how what you have to offer can add value or help your customer. And that's it. And when you think about it from that perspective, doesn't selling feel a lot better? It's not just a cash grab. Your audience, your potential customers are not just dollar signs. They're real people. And so you want whatever you're selling or whatever you're offering to be of value for them. You're going to be exchanging the value that you have for the value that they have, which in most cases is money. But if you really think about it, selling goes beyond just exchanges between goods and services and money. If you think about it, this podcast, I'm, I have sold you on the idea that you should listen to this podcast because I'm giving you something of value. If you did not find value in this podcast, you wouldn't listen, right? So I'm giving you something of value. In exchange, you're giving me your attention. You're giving me your time that you're listening to this podcast. Now, that's not necessarily a transactional like dollar good exchange between the two of us. However, let's say I was looking for sponsors. I could say, hey, I have X amount of people who are listening to this podcast. They're getting a lot of value. And I could then get the sponsor to give me money for your attention. They want to get in front of you. So there's sales involved in so many things. It's not always just, hey, I have this product. Let me sell it to you. If you think about it, the entire social media idea is built on this uh, value exchange between I'm giving you this free service. In exchange, you are giving me value by giving me your attention, giving me your engagement, and then they sell that to marketers, people who want to advertise. So sales is in so many things. So don't just get bogged down with this idea that I hate selling. You sell yourself all the time. When you go in for a job interview, your resume is like a list of your skills. That's your value that you're offering offering to a company. So sales is everywhere. Get used to selling. It's there. So let's talk a little bit about how you begin to embrace selling as a creator, because that's really what you're here for. One way to do that is to determine how much of your mindset and beliefs around selling are influenced by your personal money stories. So your money stories are your beliefs and views about money. Now you have developed these probably early in life. A lot of this was formed during childhood and negative money stories really plague creative business owners. Because there's just so many messages that we receive at a young age that we've never questioned, that we've never really sat and thought about, do I actually believe that? And that can cause a lot of issues when it comes to selling, because there is a mindset needed to sell. And a lot of our early childhood messages contradicts that particular mindset. So if you just think about some of the most common money stories you hear as a child, stories like money is evil, people with money are greedy. No one be able to afford to pay me. It's wrong to want money, especially a lot of it. And you have to really sit down and question, do you actually believe these stories are true for you? Because while they may have felt true for your caregivers, you've likely adopted those same stories without questioning where they've come from. And you have to let go of those stories because they don't belong to you. You really need to explore your money stories to determine if you accept them. And if you don't, It's time to uncover which ones are interfering with your ability to sell successfully. So journaling is a really great tool, therapy as well, but journaling is a great starting point to help you get to the bottom of some of those beliefs. I have a few journaling questions or prompts that I'm going to share with you right now, but I actually have an entire list of potential money stories and additional journaling prompts in the resource for today's episode. So you can find that over at pimpyourbrilliance.com backslash bootcamp if you want to get access to those. But here are your reflective journaling questions. How was money discussed in your household? Was it good or was it bad? How was your parents' relationship with money? And you know how your parents' relationship with money was, so be honest. And then how has yours been? Do you relate money to any negative experiences? So we can think about divorce, um, I don't know. There's so many different things. What does money represent to you? 
Is there anything around money that feels shameful or makes you feel guilty? And then when you think about money as a child, does it pull up any strong feelings or memories for you? So once you start journaling through some of these questions, really dig into your stories and the ideas and the memories that come along with them. Which of these stories do you know to be false for yourself? Which of these stories affects your thoughts and beliefs about your ability to grow your business? Because a lot of these things are just, they're, they're very deep. They're things that we haven't even consciously processed, but they're stories that we have accepted because our trusted adults told us these things were the truth and we accepted them as that. But try to think about and pick your top three money stories and rewrite them to reflect what you actually believe about money. So here are a few rewritten money stories. Money is evil. That can be turned into money is a tool and I choose to use it to create a better life for myself and my family. People with money are greedy. You can rewrite that as having money gives me options and choices. Whatever you decide and however you decide to rewrite your money stories, make sure that you display them somewhere, somewhere that you're going to see them often and that you can read read them and revisit them and let them soak in because you really want to accept these new money stories. And if your reframe just feels like complete BS, like you, you're not ready to take that big of a leap, try shorter steps. So maybe money is evil. You can just reframe that to money is not evil. It's a tool. And as you begin to accept that, you can expand on it to I choose to use it to create a better life for myself, my family, and for others. So you can stair step your way there if some of these things are just really, really um, ingrained in you and, you know, to the point where you feel like this is the hill I'm ready to die on. Another way to embrace selling is to reframe the way you think and talk about it. And this is major, in the words of DJ Khaled, major key. As I mentioned earlier, your desire to not come across as too salesy has resulted in you selling a lot less than you should be. And that's a gross overcorrection on a key part of your business. Businesses sell, point blank, period. There's nothing you can do about it. If you're not selling, you don't have a business. Businesses sell. So you have to stop framing selling as a negative or burdensome experience for your customers. This is weighing you down. And your belief that selling involves taking something away from customers instead of giving them something is preventing you from seeing how it can be mutually beneficial. And this goes back to what I said earlier about a good sales experience feels like a fair value exchange that's mutually beneficial for both parties. If selling is an exchange of value, then you can reframe it as a way to help your customer achieve a certain outcome because transformations have value. So that makes your sales process a way to help potential customers make informed buying decisions because you're providing them with the necessary information to do so. And there's nothing slimy about that. I'd actually argue that you're providing even more value because you're making sure only the right people are spending their money with you. All right, so I wanna share a few common sales hangups that I've heard from my students and from clients and then offer a few reframes because here's how I want you to think about reframing selling. So I hate selling. I feel bad taking someone's money. You can reframe that to selling helps fuel my creativity and grows my business. I'm not taking from my audience. I'm making an offer that the right person will be happy to receive. Another one is I don't want to send too many emails during my launch because I don't want to be annoying to my audience. Reframe that to I'm excited to share my latest offer with my audience and provide them with the information to make an informed buying decision. My message will make it to the right people. And then the last one is I'm afraid that my client proposal is too high and the client will reject it. Reframe that to, I do my best work when I'm fairly compensated. The right clients will see my value and are happy to accept my offer. And I believe that. Listen, if you don't charge appropriately for your client work, you will resent it the entire time because you won't feel like you're being fairly compensated and you will be annoyed. And that does not make for a good client experience. Just an FYI sidebar. So now I want you to think about what are some of your common hangups around selling? 
So if you are in the realm of e-commerce or you do client work or you sell digital products, whatever it is, what are the things that give you pause? What are the things that you are hung up around having to do for your business? Because you don't want to be annoying. You don't want to be too expensive. You don't want to be too salesy. Think about those and make a list of them and then write a reframe for each one. And really start accepting that as your truth and not this, I hate selling. I don't want to be annoying. That's negative talk. That's negative thinking. And that's not helping you really embrace the sales process. And finally, to truly embrace selling, you need to accept these truths. There's three of them. There are people for whom your offer is a great fit. There are people with a problem you can help solve. And there are people who you can help achieve success or avoid failure. And if you truly believe in the product or service that you're offering, it's your duty to sell it because you're helping someone. You're making things more convenient for them. You are helping them succeed or you're shortening their learning curve. Helping your potential customers see that you are there to resolve a problem for them isn't being too salesy. It's being of service. And that is what I want you to take away from this episode is that you are not being too salesy. You are being of service to your customers, your audience, and you can sell to them, especially if you're doing it with good intentions and you do feel like you have done your best to help create a solution for their problems. So quick recap. Embrace selling by one, questioning your money stories to really uncover your negative feelings around money. And then the other way is to reframe the way you think and talk about money. So drop the negative language, reframe your selling hangups in a way that is supportive to you because your success, the success of your business really greatly hinges on your ability to sell and your ability to sell authentically, your ability to sell confidently. And I want you to be a confident seller because I want your business to do well and make tons of money and for you to really be able to use money as that tool to create the life that you want for yourself. Don't forget about the resource for this lesson. You can find those worksheets over at pimpyourbrilliance.com backslash bootcamp. And as always, there are three ways that you can support this show by leaving a review in your favorite podcast player, sharing a screenshot of this episode on your favorite social network, or buying me a coffee over at pimpyourbrilliance.com backslash coffee. But that's all I have for this week's episode. So until next time, go out there and pimp your brilliance. Uh-huh.